how can I automatically relink all of my link tables in my Access front-end database for my user automatically using a script without having to open Access or getting people to do anything? I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and today we're going to talk about how to relink tables using VBScript, uh, which is a very, very handy way of doing it. It's something that you can put into a scheduler, into a user startup folder, so that it automatically does the maintenance for them as soon as they log in, and it's a very, very handy way of doing it. So without further ado, let's get to our table relinking using VBScript. Are you a programmer looking for your next gig? Make sure to check out the links in the description. Okay, so many thanks for a viewer request on this one. Um, this is actually a really cool uh, thing that you can do with VBScript. And following up from our previous episodes there, where I did a full deployment with VBScript, uh, in this one I'll show you how to relink your table. So I have this little file folder. I'm assuming that I copied the back end and the front end into this folder. Maybe it's a, uh, something that was deployed that way. And as you can see, this is the back end file with just the data. So it just has some tables in it. And we want to link to these tables using the front end, uh, front end file. And so you could also put the back end on a network directory or something as well. But in this case, we're going to link it to the local, uh, local file. And so you can see in the front end here, there's no tables except for the settings table. And so what we're going to do is we want to see the table links uh, be created in the front end file here to go to that back end file which is in the same folder. And so I'm going to right click and create a new uh, text file on my desktop just like we did in our previous episode. I'm going to do this in a way for all of you guys that would like to use Notepad. We can call it Visual Notepad if you want. And uh, we're going to make just a text file and then we're going to manually change the uh, file extension to uh, VBS. And you can actually do this in your, in your Notepad++, but for those of you using Notepad, you can just, uh, sometimes you can just click on it on the desktop and change it, but you can also just use the command line and you can just uh, change your directory and then just say rename, relink, uh, you know, fe.txt to relink.vbs, uh, and there you go. So now we've got a relink uh, file in there, and I can minimize that. And so now we've got a VB script file, um, and I've got Notepad++ open here, and you can actually create a new file and save it as VB script in Notepad++, so you don't have to do that initial step. But um, I'll drag that that file onto Notepad++ so that we can work on it. But uh, not everybody has uh, Notepad++. If you don't, it's actually a pretty cool program for programming scripting stuff like this. Um, and, uh, and so we'll go ahead and start. Um, so in the top of our script here, I'm just going to create some variables. <clears throat> in VBScript, you don't actually need to create the variables. And a note, as I mentioned before in my previous episode, um, you cannot have strongly typed variables in, in VBScript. They are all of the variant data type. And so they sort of receive their type when they receive a value. Um, and so that top area with the block there, that's sort of like what gets executed as soon as the script is run. Uh, but down below what you can do is you can create some subs and functions and all kinds of stuff. So you can create whole bunch of uh, really cool functionality, um, uh, you know, dependent on each other, a uh, lot of functions and, and subroutines in there and in a VB script. So don't limit yourself. Um, if you know how to do, <clears throat> how to create functions and to sort of make your code more reusable and stuff like that, you should definitely do it. Um, so the first function I'm going to make, or subroutine, is called delete old table. And so we're going to try to delete the old table that we're going to pass to it. Um, and we're going to say on error re resume next. Uh, so that means if we don't find it or there's an error, just continue out, out of this function and exit. And so it's going to use that database uh, parameter we're going to pass in and the table. So it says delete this table from the database. Um, that's the first sub that we're going to create. 
And now on error resume next is the only uh, error, real error trapping that we have in VBA script. We don't, we can't actually go on error, go to this or that like we can in VBA. Uh, but at least we have on error resume next. Um, it's, it is handy for certain cases and we can use it for, for those. Okay, so as you might expect, the next sub that we're going to create is link my table. Um, so we're going to link a table. We're going to pass in the database. Uh, we're going to pass in the backend string to the backend database, the path to the backend database, and then the source table name, and then the alias that we want it to be called in our front end because it's not always the same. So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give you that option to be able to um, change the name of the database uh, and and sort of move on from there. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do when we receive this command to link my table is we're going to say, hey, in my front end file, delete delete this, delete it if it's there because we're going to replace it with a new version of it. Um, uh, it should be said that you can also alter an existing table uh, table link and change the connection and stuff. Um, I like to delete the old one and put, put a new one in, um, so you can decide how you want to do that. Um, so we'll create a, a connect variable, um, basically kind of like a connection string, which is very simple. It just has this database preceded by a semicolon, database equals, and then our whatever our backend database um, file path is. And then we'll also use I, we'll use a TDF, so that's going to be a table definition. Uh, if you think of your Access uh, VBA programming, and we're going to set our table definition equal to the uh, db.createTableDef. So we're going to create a new table, and then we're going to append it in, in the next few lines. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the name of the alias, because that's what we want the table to be called in our front-end database, a zero. I'll get back to that in a minute. The source name, uh, which is this, the name in the database that is in the back end, and then the connection string. And the zero, actually, you can use a, this long integer to, to, to do it. Uh, basically, it kind of helps define whether or not you're using the database exclusively or not. And so um, I found that putting a zero in allows me to link all my tables, and it won't lock up the back end database table and that's what I want. So um, then we'll do a db.tabledefs.append. So we'll append that table definition to our uh, uh, table definitions in the database. And then we'll set TDF equal to nothing to release the resources off of that one. And then, uh, and then, uh, then once we're done, um, then we'll just exit. And that will be the end of it. So that means. By creating a sub here, that means that we can reuse this code several times and reduce the amount of uh, a code that we might create um, if we had to you know, create a whole bunch of tables um, and stuff like that. And, and also, if, there's, if we need to change it, uh, we don't need to change you know, 100 lines of code. If we relink 100 tables, you know, we can change it in one place in just in the in the link my table subroutine so that's a good thing to know okay so we're going back up to the uh this is the code that gets executed so before the subs uh, and the functions and we're going to set our app variable equal to create object access dot application just like we did in our previous episodes and we're going to set uh workspace uh equal to and we're going to create a new workspace in our in our app uh, using uh, the application, and the we'll put um, the last argument to um, the third argument is a password, I believe. Um, second argument is the username, and uh, I can't remember what the first argument is, uh, but we we can just leave it as a empty string there. Um, DB use jet is what you'd use in VBA for that two there, uh, but we don't we don't know that in VB script doesn't really know that. And so we're just going to put the, the number two in there. And then once we have a workspace open, we can go set DB equal to workspace open database. And then our front end. Oh, I haven't put our front end <laughs> path in there yet. So we should load those variables. So we'll load our front end and back end variables. And uh, so we'll go C, dev, 
uh, test app uh, was the name of the folder and uh, I think it was uh, uh, what was it uh, I think it was my fe yeah my look at the folder here my fe dot so yeah it's my fe dot accdb and uh, then the back end is, is uh, the same but it's a my be dot uh, accdb so in this case very simple linking uh, strategy <laughs> And as if you're deploying something with a front end and a back end in a local folder, which does happen. Lots of people do that. Um, so there you go. So we've got, now we're op saying open database and then our, our uh, string for the front end uh, system there. And then what we'll do is uh, we're going to use that function link my table. So now we can just say link my table in this database DB, you know, you. Uh, link it to the back end with the strdb the the string for the back end we're going to link the source table name is candy and we're going to give it in our front end we're going to pretend that the front end uses the name candy link and then as you can see here we can use exactly the same uh, kind of um, we can reuse the code the same kind of uh, command again um, for all the other tables so we can go link my table uh, you know, in this database, same back end, but it's candy order, and we'll call it candy order link. And then we can do the same for, for the next table. And uh, you could even, um, I need to remember the name of the tables here. Uh, yeah, so it's candy event and candy makers. Okay. Okay, I think I can remember that. <clears throat> okay, so we've got, uh, uh, we're going to do the same thing for these, o for these other ones. We'll say candy maker. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> candy makers and uh, that'll be candy makers link and you could you know you could put all of the links or the table the table names in a table in the front end if you wanted and then you could open a record set and loop through your table of names and then use link my table each time you go through that that would be one way of doing it it's like say you had more than say I don't know like like 10 tables, you'd probably want to store that in, in an actual table that can be modified and then just have a loop go through and use link my table each time through the loop. But um, for this simple example, I'm just demonstrating there's some reusable code. Uh, we can say link my table. And now we've got four tables that I should see when I open that. So there's four, that, that's the back end tables. Just want to make sure I've got the names right here. Uh, yeah, candy makers, candy, candy makers, candy order, some kind of out of order in the way I did it, but it looks like the names are right. Okay, so I can close the back end and then, um, and the front end, so when we see, when we run this, uh, we should see the front end should have all those link tables in it. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just minimize that. I should save that code. Have a quick look over. We're going to use that delete table first to try to delete it if it's there. Um, and then we're going to recreate it using a new one. So there's the script. So if I run that, double click that, it looks like it took off and did something. I didn't get any errors, which is great. Uh, so let's open up that front end file now and see. Oh, yeah, there they are. Okay, so now we've got candy event link, candy link, candy makers link. Uh, and candy order link and so um, all those tables are in there which is great and one of the important things to remember because there's other ways you can do this but if I open I copied and pasted and made another copy of this to demonstrate that I can open uh, multiple copies of the same uh, front end onto that back end uh, using uh, whatever op if, if it's optimistic record locking or whatever because if you use the version the way of doing it that uh, opens it exclusively then as soon as you open that that one table it's going to lock that table uh, for everybody else okay so i did get excited there and uh, i didn't sort of uh, clean up my variables so there's some things you can do i did notice that it didn't actually need to have the close on there access does actually close at the end of VB script there, and it did not leave anything in my um, task manager that I could see was left dangling and running. But you should do a db.close, which will close the database at least. 
Um, that's probably one thing you can do. And the other thing, if you wanted to leave a message for your user saying, you know, uh, you know, your application was updated, um, you could do that. Um, that's a couple of things that you could do there. So if I minimize that and I run it now, um, you can see now it'll say, okay, your application was updated, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, you could also, if I flip back to, you can also do sort of a graceful exit. Um, you can say app.quit, which will actually cause the Microsoft Access instance that you open to quit explicitly, um, and uh, which is a good thing to do. I have noticed that it does quit anyway when the script ends, uh, but in some cases, on I remember in, in in the old days, it used to stay open, and you'd see like, you know, ten copies of Access running in your task manager. You can set your variables equal to nothing. That's another thing that you can do to to release resources explicitly. And if I save that, um, then that's going to um, add some sort of cleanup. And if I run it again, you can actually see it caught the Access <laughs> opening in the background there, and and. Uh, and then gave the message, which is what we wanted to see. And that is how you can relink your front-end access tables in VBScript. Need help with coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do automatic relinking of access uh, front-end files to the back-end uh, databases. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And if when you see the bell, click the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.